You know, um, <laughs> never mind. What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video, another day, another vid. Thanks so much for tuning in. Love ya. Good to see you here, all of your smiling faces. Today, we are gonna break down the Break the Habit video, basically how I edit a B-roll video, a, a short, mini short, a, a film, a, a, an internet vid a video. We're gonna break down how I make a video, specifically the shots I chose and why, how I organize them, and then most importantly, the sound design how I did it, the things that I used, the places I got the sounds, and why it makes videos a thousand times better. And we're gonna end things off with a challenge, giving away some subscriptions to Epidemic Sounds that you can do the same thing. It's gonna be a good one. I'm super excited for the hashtag challenge, by the way, because it's, uh, it's almost the end of summer depressing. So we're going to end off the summer with another hashtag challenge, which I'm psyched about. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into the video today. All right. So jumping into Premiere Pro, it all starts for me uh, where the project bins live. So I like to make different folders for all the different cameras that we're using. And then just random folders like MISC, SFX, music, those types of things. Everything's organized. Uh, it's all clean. It's all tidy. I know if I open up any of these folders, everything is neatly organized inside, ready to go. What is in MISC? Things like light hits or dust or random drone shots or mat bars or, you know, a little insert or a meme or whatever I'm trying to, you know, just accent. A little, little spice rack, if you will, just dropping in some spices. Those, those things go in the MISC folder. This edit specifically, the whole underwater film kind of happened by accident. So I just give you a little a little back history on what you saw Tuesday called Break the Habit. From a nation that operates on a false belief that we're not as important without a blue check or a first class seat. It's a social status over a social life, an online presence rather than being present. That little spoken word thing, I actually wrote that on a flight home from Finland a year ago. And I recorded that voiceover the same day I recorded the voiceover for that little film I made called The Owl. Those moments are important, but the real moments, you know, the substance and nostalgia in life, it's the small everyday stuff, the routines. Those were done within 10 minutes of each other. And I had this voiceover, I had it with some other footage and I've been trying it on different things here and there. It just didn't fit. It just didn't fit. It didn't feel like it was working. So I just put it on the back shelf. Last week, went out to make a vlog, which you've probably seen by now called Underwater Photography, where Chris Howe and myself were exploring this new housing and just different ways to take photos because it's, it's difficult. So I started editing the B-roll because I was feeling it. I got home super excited and realized like, oh, this is, this is kind of dope. This is kind of better than the vlog. <laughs> so I thought to myself, maybe I should just put it out as its own little video because I'm just really proud of it. It just really turned out well. Like I've, I'm psyched on this. Then I thought, oh, the voiceover, that might actually work for this because the footage kind of feels ominous and just a little bit darker and moody. And it's got that heavy weight, that feeling to it. I thought that voiceover might just be perfectly suited. After I finished editing everything, did all the sound, all the sound design, I dropped that voiceover in and it just worked. So we sent everything off to get mixed. It came back, sounded amazing. It's, it's funny how like I didn't plan for that to even be a video that I was gonna make last week. So it, it, it just happened. That's your little backstory. That's your little history on Break the Habit. Take a look at the timeline. This is what it looks like. You've got your main clips right here. You've got your end titles. You got a couple accents at the top. Got a little dust filter in there. This little thing added these little bad boys. You know, those little floaties in the water. A lot of that stuff was already in the water, which this particular shot didn't have anything. And I thought it looks kind of cool. And then the real, the real meat of this piece happens uh, on all the audio tracks below. So you can see there's not a ton. I've done a lot more sound design than this, but these, all of these things are all the sounds that I specifically added to make it feel you know, a lot more cinematic. That sound design has everything to do with what makes that film great. It's one of those understated things. Sometimes it's not very exciting to do. The more and more I do it, the more and more I love it, but it adds so much value to a film. I might be wondering where I get all my sounds. It's kind of a mix between sounds I make myself, like my own sound packs. Epidemic Sound is where I get the bulk of everything because not only do they do music, like I've told you guys, they, they do sound effects as well. 
And then I've just picked up random packs here and there, and I have this just massive library of the most random things. Like if I need like a cattle walking, I'll, I'll find it. I'll try to find sonar beep. I'll try to find those specific things. Going back to Epidemic Sound, they have a massive, massive sound effects library. So like the sonar beeps at the beginning, all of those are from Epidemic Sound. So you know, you've seen the film, this is what it sounds like. You get that cool music in the background. A little sonar beep. Well placed. That nice piano comes in. All of those undertones in the background, all of those whooshes, the bubbles that you're hearing, all of those things just add, add to the mood, add to just the vibes that you get when you watch this. Without those, it wouldn't be nearly as impactful. There's that sonar beep again. Now the music, let's pause that, the music makes it sentimental. It makes it feel sad, it makes it feel emotional, which is great. But I'm gonna play it again in a second without any of the actual music, just to show you how cool it sounds, it's just with the sound design. Okay, cool, so that's enough. Let's go ahead, disable those two audio tracks. Right click, enable, right click, enable. So now, all you're gonna hear is the sound design from this film. I'll let it roll for a little bit, just so you can kind of get a little idea. It's almost cool without music. Like, it would work. You could upload this with no music. And guarantee there's gonna be commenters that say, I prefer it without music. And yeah, there's a little bit of me that does too. Fun little fact, that sound you just heard of me kicking my foot was actually a low pass filter I put on the sound of a jet flying through the air. Just worked with the water and the way my foot cut through that. So one of my tips would be if you're making sound design, it doesn't always necessarily have to be the exact sound that you're looking for. I talked about this maybe two years ago now when I was shooting with Jesse Driftwood and he, he did a massive like Ollie off of like a six set. And when he landed, I wanted like a really impactful hit, but I didn't want like a typical boom. I wanted a, a, an impactful, like I wanted you to feel it in your bones, in your bone marrow. That's where I wanted you to feel it. I found a, a sound clip of prison doors being slammed shut. A sound of jail doors being slammed shut. And it sounds like this. Put a little extra sauce on those in Premiere Pro, low pass, different EQ things. And when he lands, Bam, that steel, that that slamming of the door resonating just sounded so good. And it's just those little things like a fighter jet going by. Like if you hear it again, you'll see what I mean by like. Very easy sound to find. Low passed it, doubled it, split it just a little bit. Just played around until it sounded right. You'd never know that was a jet. The funny thing is getting onto the getting onto the sea dew there, that water splash, that didn't exist. Those were two sounds I found on Epidemic Sound called like bathtub water splash or something. I just found two that worked, put them in the exact spot because you don't know where the water hits. Like you can't see it individually falling on different parts of that platform. Like it just you just see water splashing, you hear it, your brain makes the connection, it works. So listening to that again. So anytime I did underwater stuff, I found what's called like an atmospheric undertone, if you will. Not necessarily uh, music, not necessarily a sound effect, but just like a resonating undertone, an atmospheric sound of just like, kind of like wind blowing or 
but those types of atmospheric undertones work great, especially when you're trying to get like a creepy vibe or a, a mysterious or scary, those types of things, which works for underwater. You can hear it there in the background. So that was just the sound effect of someone swimming. I just slowed it down by 50% because the sound effect sounded like this. So I just put it back in, slowed it down 50%, put a low pass filter on it and a low pass filter. I'll show you that in a second. Right, so if I was to do that again in the timeline, we've got our in and our out points. I can drag that on here. Now we listen to that. Okay, cool. Command J if you're on a Mac, and I can change that speed to 50%. Now we listen to it. It works, but it's just like a little too sharp. It's a little too bright, that sound. So you come over here to effects. You're gonna type in low pass. Drag that onto our clip here. Now let's listen to it, and it sounds like this. So that, even listening to that, could sound like breathing underwater, like letting bubbles go. So you could even double that sound with something sinking underwater and it would sound like, let's just say you threw a stone into the water and then you followed it down as it was just sinking lower and lower and lower. Now visualize that and listen to this. 100% that would work. And that's just the sound of someone swimming, but we just adjusted it to work for something else. That's where sound design just gets very exciting. So that low pass is a little bit too much. You don't hear the, uh, you don't hear the sloshing of the water as sharp as I wanted it. So we just adjust the cutoff a little bit until you find something you're happy with. That's good. Now you've got a sound that works for two different things. Let's keep watching. There's that bathtub noise again. Obviously a hit when you dive into the water. Got the bubbles again, because we're seeing bubbles. So again, brain makes that connection. It just works. And then a little whoosh to go with that reverse clip. And then at the end for the credits, put those sonar beeps back in with the underwater bubbles. Now, after all of those things were finished, music looked good, felt how I wanted it to feel, sound design was ready to go. What you do if you're gonna ever send this off to someone who mixes audio, you send them an OMF file, which is an open media framework, I think it stands for, but essentially, I don't have to send Gabe all my additional sound effects, I just export the OMF file, and he can bring that into Pro Tools or whatever software he's using to mix an audio engineer, and he can still tweak all of those things for me and then send me back a final mix. We are creatures of habit, yearning for a way to be heard, but rarely stop to hear. Now it's all done. So all I gotta do is completely disable all the audio from everything. So we can do that by selecting all of the audio, just coming down here, dragging a box over everything, and then right click and enable. That basically grays out all of the audio as you can see, missed two right here, so we can click and disable those ones. And then we just drop in our master mix at the bottom, and the only thing we have for audio is that fresh new track at the bottom that has everything with it. Couple other little fun things that I did uh, was color grading this. So if you've ever shot underwater video in a lake, specifically the one that's close to me, isn't necessarily the clearest lake you've ever seen. It's not really fresh water, it's, uh, it works and it's, it's nice and I like to go out and swim in it, but by no means is it really good for footage. So let's just take a look, for example, at the color grade of a clip like this water and let's hide the effects on it. That's actually what it looked like. Put that effect back on and that is the color grade we ended with. Same thing with diving into the water here before, after. It was really difficult with the shots that were split half and half where you could see the sky and you could see the water because I wanted to color grade the water but with the amount of color grading I had to do to shift it from green to blue, it affected the sky as well. So I had to create a mask which let me just color grade the water, not touching the sky. 
but I had to do that mask for every frame of the water, right? So check this out. So coming over here to that jumping shot, which was super cool, if we turn off the effects, that's what the water looked like, but I wanted it to look like this. But if the whole sky looked like that, it would, it would just look weird. So up here is actually the mask that I made. You can see that mask as it moves through the frames because you have to mask it frame by frame because that water's moving, right? So if we scrub through from the beginning, it's little things like that that usually go unnoticed, but those types of things take a long time, but they do make those projects a lot nicer when you put the love and the extra attention into little things like that. Now in this particular clip, I go underwater and Chris follows me down, but I didn't like what it looked like once we got under the water. Now we'll play it frame by frame. So you can see me going underwater and suddenly that's a new shot. So I started masking out the water as it just moves upwards and then my body continues to fall down. So when you see it at speed, you don't even realize there's a cut there. It's kind of just been hidden. Your brain just kind of pieces it together. So again, I created a mask, masked out the transition as that camera goes under the water to a different clip of me going under the water, but going in the same direction. That's screen direction. We've talked about that. Sometimes if you have someone walking to the right, then the next clip cuts and it's a car driving to the right, then it's a bird flying to the right. Those things all seamlessly work together well because of screen direction. They're all going the same way, so it feels seamless. It feels almost like a transition in and of itself, but it's not. Your brain just kind of pieces it together. The shot up top, he was moving down. The next shot, he's still moving down. Cool, and we covered that cut with a mask on the water. And if we go frame by frame, it just slowly moves up. So that wasn't a very big one. It was only one, two, three, four frames, and that was enough to get a nice little seamless, uh, seamless little transition there. So finding those clips that work together, even though you didn't intentionally shoot them to be together, is something to definitely look for when you're making projects like this. Now, one last tip that I like to do when I'm making things, like little mini short films or little B-roll films, if you will, is making sure that music ends when it's supposed to. So this track was actually quite a bit longer, three minutes and 11 seconds, but you'll notice the film is only two minutes and 30 seconds. So I just made a little cut here. You probably don't even really notice when you're actually paying attention to the video. That's where the cut was. Might be a little obvious now that I've pointed it out, but when you're watching the film, no one's gonna know that there was a cut there. So I just find a spot near the ending that I like because it got more triumphant and it started to build and I wanted that as the ending. And I found the same kind of note. I watched the waveform and I just matched them up as best as I could. I would say don't be afraid to take the music that you want and Frankenstein it up a little bit so that it works specifically for you. That's something that we always try to do with our videos is end them where the song ends instead of just having to fade it out. I'm not a big fan of just long fade outs of music. It works, but I prefer it to end where it's supposed to end. It makes it feel more polished and professional, like it was meant for this piece. And I think I already mentioned this, but I love to choose the music first. A lot of times I hear something and it it inspires the idea for a project. I hear that music and it starts to inject ideas into my brain and then I want to shoot to match the music that I hear in my head or that I found online. So a lot of the times that's how I start things and I started this whole project by finding that music first. It could have been the first thing I put in the timeline. So having that allowed me to just edit the mood through the song versus trying to have all the footage and then find a song that maybe works for all of the cuts. I always find for me, personally as an editor, finding that track first really helps, not only just with editing to the beat, but inspiring the whole visual before we even get started. So those are just kind of my tips. I hope you guys enjoyed that little, just little behind the scenes look at how I make something like this. It starts with organization, finding the music and getting inspired, to culling through the footage to find good transition points, the color grade obviously, and then a big one is the sound design. So coming back to that, I propose that we do the PMSFX challenge. So definitely hashtag, you're gonna post these on Instagram. So the challenge is make a 30 second B-roll film highly enriched with sound effects using music and sound from Epidemic Sound. Now, I've linked it below. If you're not a member, that's where I get all my music. That's where I get all my sound effects. A lot of stuff comes right 
there. So if you want to sign up, there's a trial, all of those things are outlined clearly at the link below. Click on that, check it out. We'll get back to this at the very beginning of September. I wanna give you guys some time if you're traveling or if you wanna go somewhere to make it. And then we'll feature, let's say 10 different artists, but you gotta use that hashtag PMSFX challenge so I can go through them and then uh, we'll all listen together. So that'll be cool. And we'll pick three winners and they'll get one year subscription free from Epidemic Sound. Okay guys, that is it for me. Hopefully you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Subscribe if you want to stick around and see more photography, cinematography, vlogs, short of this, all of the things. Stick around if you want to see more of that. Be happy to have you. Join the community, join the discussion, and, and I will see you in the next video. See ya. Thank you.